third and final video for your question and answer session. This time we're gonna get through all the remaining questions that we have. All I have essentially are four questions, but I'm gonna drill that down to two. So we're just gonna jump straight into the butt sex, just like the YouTube order, having to go fuck himself. <laughs> So we're gonna start this shit off with Mr. Final Prestige. When you made the Star Citizen scam video, I don't think you anticipated how warped and brainwashed their community really is. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Seeing how illogical they are now, do you think it's a good or bad thing how badly these people back cloud Imperial Gaming? As an FYI, the game will never fail because people that spend money will continue to spend more money on the game if it's seen as a financial failure. It's actually quite scary. That part I do agree with, but let's get into your question. I knew. I mean, I was well aware of how badly warped those idiots have basically become. They basically turned their community into a fucking cult. <laughs> That's why I named the video a scam, but what I should have named that video was the cult of Star Citizen. Because with any kind of cult or brainwashing, the only person that benefits from a cult is the person in charge. That's it. And that's basically what Star Citizen has turned into. The person in charge of the game, Chris Roberts, created his last game almost like 20 years ago at this point. You know, it's a good game for the limitations of the technology back in the day. But then he decided to turn to movies for the next 15 years. And for the next 15 years, he made two types of movies. Those that critics hated, but broke even in revenue. And those that critics liked, but lost money. That's it. He never made a financial hit. He never won any major awards, received any higher accolades, other than he produced some movies. When the movie Money Well ran dry, and there was no funding left to make his movies, he came to this epiphany that video game technology will now allow him to make the greatest game of all time. Why is that? It's because his movies never really amounted to shit, and he couldn't fund his own movies anymore. Studios wouldn't take on his projects because he never proved he was more than average. Even crowdfunding would've worked because people don't get into crowdfunding fucking movies. But a video game, on the other hand, that's a new story. That's bigger business than movies these days, with more copies of games being sold, higher retail value, you know, games are being sold at 60 bucks, and movie tickets are at most, what, 20 to $25 if you want, like, IMAX or high-end theaters or some shit like that? So he went where the money is. And when studios didn't want to fund a person who hadn't made a game in 15 fucking years, and he made bad financial decisions in movies, studios laughed his ass off. So then he starts a crowdsourced game, stating that he will not make a game under the control of studios that will make the greatest independently developed game in history. No EA, no Activision in control of that shit, which is not a bad thing, by the way. <laughs> That's like one smart thing to say. And because gamers' resentment of these publishers is at an all-time high, studios are greedy, PC players have a disdain for how consoles hold back PC games, he appealed to the whims of a select core of gamers. PC players who have no issue spending money. These are people that spend hundreds of dollars on their gaming rigs, they spend money on subscriptions, on memberships, they float free to play games by buying transactions in game, and this cop gobbler saw his next meal ticket. The money train of PC players. What he's done, better than anyone, better than any salesman or con artist or swindler, is convince people who give him money they are investors. This is their game. This is their dream, their product. He never says, I created this anymore, or my, or me. He says, we. He says, the gamers. He says, the community is responsible for the success of this game. Basically, Cult 101. <laughs> No, really, every fucking cult that has ever existed starts the same way. A cunning person finds mentally weak people to prey on, making them believe they're part of something special, making them believe they're a community, and they have a stake in the cult, and that outsiders don't understand them. Bad people want to see them fail, see them in ruin, watch them crash and burn, and that's what he created. Not a video game, but a fucking cult. A cult that gives him money willingly. A cult that spends thousands of dollars on a ship for a game that is still years from being completed and still misses deadline after deadline. A game that rolls out bits and pieces and then more bits and pieces and then states this is progress. But hey, we need more money to do this. That money creates the studios. It helps development. It buys the newest technology. You know, granted, these are all things a studio needs. There is no question about that. I don't doubt that. All top games need years of development. That is indisputable. All games need money to create the product. However, when you look at the fine print on the donation, you can see exactly how smart Chris Roberts is and how he preyed on the gullible. The Star Citizen cult fans will state they have made an investment. They pledged the donation. What they didn't read is that if the game fails, I don't think it will, but I'll talk about it in a second, if the game never comes to fruition, that money is gone. There's no tax protection against their money. There's no bankruptcy protection. So if this motherfucker just decided one day to close up shop, 
take the investment dollars, and live the rest of his life in a non-extradition country, there isn't a goddamn thing players would be able to do to get that money back. That's not an investment, by definition. That is an unrefundable gift by law. He basically set up an ongoing money collection, calls it an investment, which it sounds like the players are really investing into this game, but in reality, the cult fans get nothing. They get a game when it's complete, whether they pledged $5 or $500,000. There is nothing they get in return other than the game. A game they have no rights to, no control over, no direct recourse of profits, nothing. He got them. Hook, line, and sinker. That's how the scam works. That's how to profit off of a cult and what every cult in history has taught us. Now look, personally, I don't think this man is smart enough to start a cult. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, he seems a few sandwiches short of a picnic every time I see him in a fucking interview. I don't think it was his intention to create this environment. Ultimately, he wanted to create a video game because his movie career didn't pan out for the better. He wanted to make a grand game, and nobody was willing to give him the money other than clueless gamers. And once he got the crowd funds he needed, and realized he needed more, he went down the rabbit hole that follows a cult line. To him, he's making a game. To his fans, they're waiting for him to make the greatest game of all time, but behind the scenes with their money, he created a cult mentality to fund his project. I'm sure he didn't realize what he was doing at the time, but now, he certainly does. It's why he has to maintain all the we's and the us's and the ours in all of his statements because he bred this cult and needs these players to keep the money train going. Now as for the game itself, you said it yourself right in the question at the end, it's not gonna fail. And here's why. Exactly what you said, regardless of what or when this game releases, how much it releases, how well done it is, no matter what the reviews say about the game, the player participation, or how many non-contributors actually get this game, the cult will not let this game fail. The people who believe they are part of the game and part of the community are gonna continue to fund this shit. They will give money as part of fundraisers, they will buy anything the game has to offer, they will defend the game because the last thing they wanna do is feel like their game is failing. The last thing they wanna do is be like, oh, I fucked up. I gave money to a shitty product and now I have this embarrassment that fuck. I gave all this money to this asshole and the game sucked. <laughs> you know how embarrassing that shit is? Of course it's embarrassing. Remember, he created the us versus them mentality. His community has followed in the us versus them mentality. So naturally, cults don't let themselves fail. Everyone else can hate them. All critics are just haters. All people who don't buy the game just don't understand it. All console players are peasants. Good, because it's our game. It's our star citizen, not theirs. And we'll make sure it survives and thrives if we gotta put every fucking dime in our bank account into this motherfucker. That's the mark of a cult. They'll never admit it. They'll never understand it because that's how a cult works. <laughs> a leader benefits from a cult. Followers deny they're in a cult and defend it at all costs. They refuse to listen to differing opinions because the cult is theirs, not anyone else's. It's theirs and outsiders are not welcome until they assimilate with the cult mind. Which is almost why the cynic in me would love to see this game flop. <laughs> because it would be a nice smack upside the head of these cult members to finally say, you know what? Get your head out of your ass. This game was started out with good intentions, but it has turned into a scam and a cult. And unfortunately, the people that keep giving money to this game are never gonna see that because they're too busy thinking it's us versus them. Final three questions, and I figured I would lump these three together because all three discuss issues with YouTube, and all three are sort of semi-related once you see my answers. So, first question. Shut it down 12 wants to know, big YouTubers are starting to leave because they say Google's taking too much of their money. Do you think YouTubers are right about Google being too greedy, or are YouTubers the ones being greedy? Second question from Hurley is the man. You've been on YouTube now for eight years. Most channels over the years have either closed up shop, slowed down, or left for various reasons. Since you always say this is your hobby, do you see an end of the road at some point? And the third and final question that we'll have comes from Caesar to Pleaser. Seeing as you've been on this platform since 2009 and with all the drama and lack of talent and decent content on YouTube, what do you think of the future of YouTube will be? Now, while each one of these discusses a different aspect of YouTube, the answers I give are actually going to be interwoven within each other because you can talk about one topic and then you're going to end up talking about the next one. First thing, people have probably heard in the past year or so, YouTubers are getting fed up with Google and YouTube itself, which has been a sticking point with some channels. The issue actually stems from advertisers. So major advertisers were having issues where their ads were being placed on videos and they were being placed on content they didn't agree with, like putting an ad on a video where parents are abusing their kids and calling it a prank. <laughs> oh God, that fucking channel. You know, you have like things like excessive cursing, 
redneck showing gun safety, using a face of Hillary Clinton and Obama as their target practice and shit like that. So advertisers didn't have full control where they wanted their videos to be going. So they pulled their support from YouTube. Thus, Google started losing money. So as a reply, they decided to roll out some protections on videos for the advertisers. They wanted to show the advertisers they would get a better handle on the ads and the content that they would be seen on. Because of that, YouTubers got pissed off. Would their content get flagged? Would they lose ad revenue? Would their videos be wrongfully marked with no way of disputing it? All legitimate questions. So now, Google is in the middle of this. You have advertisers, who are the ones who give you the money, stating they're not happy with how videos are being monitored for the money that they're actually giving. And then you have the actual YouTube channels who bring in views where advertisers give money. They aren't happy that their videos could be restricted. So if you're Google, who do you make happy? As a business, this is a no-brainer. You follow the money. Advertisers are the ones paying the bills, not the YouTube channels. Without McDonald's, Coke, Visa, Disney, Sony, Exxon, you name it, how would YouTube actually make money? Who would give it to them? Google relies on outside companies to give them millions of dollars in ad revenue, but without those companies, they make nothing. YouTube channels will argue, well, without our content, Advertisers would miss out on thousands and millions and billions of views. Cool, but without their money, would you still be making videos? The channels that are upset over this relationship are the ones that tend to forget their place in the world. <laughs> That's the reality. Google bought YouTube years ago because they saw a venture to make money. However, channels are not employees of YouTube or Google. I am not an employee of Google or YouTube. That's just the reality. And if you have 100 million views and you have 10 million subscribers, you are still not an employee of Google. We are essentially freelancers. We are our own businesses, our own consultants, where we are not employees. So when Google decides to alter the deals of how they pay channels, guess what? They ain't a goddamn thing we can do about it. Nothing. You're stuck with their decision. But the people who are bitching and moaning the most, the people who are really crying about their money, are the channels that never made a true business for themselves. You can tell who the smarter YouTubes are and who the money hungry leeches are after all this shit is gonna be said and done. The smarter YouTubers are like say, Michelle Fan or Epic Meal Time or that ear piercing, shrieking, banshee piece of shit Nazi pie. <laughs> oh, motherfucker, man. You know, they made businesses for themselves off of YouTube. A cosmetic company using her YouTube earnings to actually start a business. A weird cooking show and promotions using YouTube to start the channel. Kid horror shows that will perpetually keep them stupid using YouTube popularity. <laughs> These are people who found other sources of revenue and grew their businesses by not relying solely on YouTube. That's smart. That's a business minded person. However, on the flip side, you have the channels who depended on YouTube for their living and they never managed to create a business outside of making videos on this platform. They never had the foresight to think, what would happen if YouTube disappeared? How long can they make a living off of videos? Or what happens when the money pot runs dry? These are the fucking idiots complaining right now and the loudest complainers that you see. And the dick slap of reality is they have nobody to blame but their goddamn selves. Not Google, not the advertisers, they suckled off that money teat for the longest fucking time, profiting revenue as a freelancer, as a venture business. However, they never had the vision to expand their business towards something else, anything else. A production company, acting opportunities, promotional features, writing ventures. The biggest fucking complainers are the ones who use the monies on themselves and never look to expand their capital with the money that they were making. I have no sympathy for these fucks because they back themselves into a corner and think Google and YouTube are gonna listen to their whining pleas to bail them out. Fuck them, they got the money they deserved and now losing the money they deserve. There should be no pity for these fucking ass clowns. So to answer your point directly, Google is greedy and YouTubers are just as greedy. However, Google is signing with the people who actually give them money, the advertisers, not the replaceable town who didn't have enough business sense to actually expand their horizons. YouTube's future isn't going to change for the better for channels, other than maybe some bigger names who will possibly leave, opening up some more revenue chances for the next channels in the line of succession. But ultimately, Google will always make money that improves their business and appeases their advertisers. Channels will rarely be the beneficiary of such changes. And the only ones that are gonna truly benefit are the largest channels that make the most money. The little guys won't matter. Only the people that actually bring in the views and the cash, but you know what? That's business. 
and there's not much that channels are going to be able to do to actually alter that. Now, as for myself, it seems that people clearly have looked at how long I've been here. <laughs> Making me feel old, motherfuckers, man. Anyway, the money thing has never truly affected me. You know, if you've been around my channel long enough, you guys already know that I don't make shit off of YouTube. I barely make four figures each year, which is pocket change. It's side money for me. It's not a major source of income, but it's income nonetheless. Because I never set out to make videos for a living or use YouTube as a reliable money source, it was always a secondary source. It's been a hobby. That's all it's ever been, and it's all it'll ever be. That being said, hobbies do end at some point. As to when that'll happen, I don't know. I started my channel just to show my friends my gameplay, and here I am all these years later, still sharing my hobbies now with different viewers. Even though now all my fucking friends who I was showing videos to, they no longer watch my shit. <laughs> Thanks, assholes. Anyway, I'm getting older. There's no secret about that. My time is becoming more and more limited as I get older. Priorities change in life. And at some point, you eventually reevaluate how to use your time that you're given. I'm not at that point yet. But obviously, I'm not oblivious to the fact that my time in making videos has lessened over the years. My gaming habits have shortened as my work days have gotten longer. I've gotten more responsibilities at work. I've taken on new projects at work. And my job pays very well. When a job pays well, you have to work longer hours. You have to take on more projects. That's just how life works. My time at home is lessened because I wake up earlier to get to work, only to come home later from work. I spend a few hours each weekday with the better half, and then it's time for Ben to have to do the rat race all over again. My weekends, they alternate between house maintenance and leisure activities. My gaming time has shortened. My appetite for different games has waned. It's part of getting older. It's part of moving to a different stage of your life. Now, I can't say how or when, or what the end will be, but it will at some point, that's just natural. It will happen when my free time and my hobbies shift, when my ability to play games is replaced with other time consuming parts of my life. When games become an afterthought on long days and my desire to make a video about games starts to fade, that's when my channel will eventually end. I can't say when that'll happen. It could be five or six years from now. It could be 10 years from now, or it could be next month. Who knows? I have no timetable to leave and I have no plans to stop making videos, but essentially the end will come when I don't have any more time for video games or when I don't have enough time to actually make videos for YouTube. I'm not at that point right now, but I'm certainly getting closer to that point than I was years ago when I started making videos when I had Modern Warfare 2 come out. Obviously all those years ago, I had more time. I had a lot more spare time to play shit. Now that spare time is dwindling. When it eventually runs out, that's when eventually my channel will come to an end. All right, that's gonna do it for this question and answer session. I wanna thank everyone who got a chance to send in their questions. I'm sure there were other people that were like, oh shit, I didn't even know this was happening. <laughs> At this point, guess what? Can't do anything about that one, man. You had your chance to send it in a couple weeks ago, but you know what? In the future, of course, we'll be doing more question and answer sessions. So, next video will be my impressions on the Destiny 2 beta. Obviously, I wanted to get these questions. I didn't want this shit to linger too much longer, so I wanted to get these out. Obviously, you've been seeing footage in the background of the Destiny beta, but my very next video is going to actually get into what I thought about the beta itself. So, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit, and I'll see you guys in the next video.